my name is Dr. Erica and welcome to our Tinkercad circuits tutorials on YouTube. We have a ton of them. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out at patreon.com slash rosy research. So we have just started our projects using Arduino and we are going to do another simple LED project that has a little bit more programming than before. So you're going to need your breadboard that you pull out and you're going to of course need an Uno and that will help us program everything. I'm actually gonna move my Uno so that it's sort of looking like this. This is gonna be a fun little traffic light that we're gonna make. So we are gonna need some LEDs and we will need LEDs in some very specific colors, mainly red, green, and, or not, yeah, red, green, and yellow. So I'm gonna rotate my LEDs because I don't want, if I have both legs of the LED on line one, they'll actually be connected to each other and they won't ever light up because you notice that they all light up here with that breadboard. They need to be in two separate lines. And that allows me to actually do a couple of LEDs per line if I wanted to. Maybe I move this one to the middle. But it does something funny there. I'm just gonna leave it like that. All right, so those are my red ones. And now I can do a couple green ones, or yellow. Yellow comes next. There we go. And then I'm going to now do green. There it is. And so now I have two on each side. You don't need to put two on each side if you don't want to. You can totally put just one on each side. Now our LEDs, we always put the cathode, which is the short leg, to ground, and we do that through a resistor. So I'm gonna make my resistor go sideways. The little rotation thing is up here in the upper left-hand corner. And I am going to put this in for all these. You can hit Control Copy and Control Paste, and that will bring it up for you. And these are gonna go into the ground rail, which is this rail that's by the minus or the black. And if you've been with us for a while, we always color those black so we don't get confused later. Then the anodes of our LEDs are going to be driven by our Arduino Uno. So the red pin we can have come out here and it can go down into, let's just say pin 13 like that. We're gonna color it pink instead of red because I don't like coloring things red. That's what goes into my hot rail or high. And then I'm gonna do this again for yellow. Yellow will go into pin 12 here. And one more time for green. And green will go into pin 11. And I'm coloring these guys sort of the same colors as my LED pieces. I want this to start with a push button. So I'm actually gonna take a push button out. You'll have to rotate it a couple of times. And this will be my little button that starts it. So maybe I put it down here. And this little button, just like the LEDs, it needs to go to ground through a resistor. Then we are gonna connect this to five volts. So in theory, when this button presses, we sort of are gonna be at this zero to five volts. And we're gonna connect it from where it's going into ground, just above it, oops, and into, we can actually use that, into our Arduino Uno. So I think I'm gonna color this one blue. And I'll color this blue too, because it's the same wire. It's just connecting them. So now my button goes into pin 10, and we can actually see what will happen to when this button presses by checking out a multimeter. So if you go into your components and you search multi, you'll find this lovely multimeter. We can take this multimeter and we can hook the positive up to the red, which is our five volts, and we can hook the negative up right here, which is what our Arduino is sort of gonna be seeing. All right. Now this push button, there's two terminals on each side. These are actually connected. They're the same terminal. And then these two terminals are connected here. They're just separated between A and B, or one and two. Here's one A and one B. So those are the same, but they're connected to each other. And then one and two are not connected to each other. So these two are not connected. When I push the button, that will connect them together. All right, so we could start this simulation and see what happens. You'll notice this comes up with zero volts. There's currently zero volts across this. I can press it down. Nothing is happening right now, but that is because we don't really have any code going on. So let's change that and let's add some code. 
But of course, before we add the code, we should actually hook this one up. We should hook our ground and our power up. That's gonna be a pretty big problem for us in just a little bit. So let's hook this one up. This is my power rail, so that goes to five volts and gets colored red. Here is my power options out of the Arduino. We have a couple grounds, so we will connect our ground rail as well. Nothing is gonna work without those two things happening. In fact, let's see if this, yep, there we go. Now we're reading a five volts. And then if I press it, I go to zero. So I can either be high or low, depending on the state of my button. All right, and we can use that in our programming. I'm gonna get rid of all of this code that we have right here so we can start freshly. So we want our traffic light to turn on only if this button is pressed. Let's move all of our stuff over a little bit. We can still see our wiring and we have that stuff coming in, which gives us a little space to pull this out for some programming. All right, so when this button is pressed, I want to go from red to yellow to green. Now you guys should be able to do the red to yellow to green on your own, and I'll leave that as a challenge. We'll have a pause break right there. But before we do that, let's deal with this button. All right, and I said the words if. If the button is pressed, then I want to do something. That's really important because I can go over into my control and I can look at the options of control I have. I can wait, but I don't really wanna wait a certain amount of time. I wanna, I mean, I do wanna wait until the button is pressed, but that's not really an option here. It could do repeat, but if I repeat it, I'm not actually reading the button coming in at all. I could repeat something while something else is happening. Maybe I could put that in like while the button is not pressed maybe or while the button is pressed, but I really only want it to run through one time. And then I have this if, and that is exactly what I want because if the button is pressed, I'm gonna start it up. And you could do an if else, but we could leave the else blank because if I press the button, I want to go through this. Otherwise, I want to do nothing. But that's sort of inherent in this if then right here. And the count up would not work for what we're doing. So if the button is pressed, well, let's check what we have. So. The button being pressed is checking to see if that, what it reads in on 10, if it's high or low. All right, and so we can say if that is equal to, and I'm going to look at input because I want the Arduino to read something from outside. So this button is giving a signal into the Arduino, and then the output is gonna be these three LEDs. All right, so this, the Arduino is controlling, it's sending out a signal to the LEDs, but it's getting its signal in from that button, which means I want input. And I am going to read the pin. All right, and I wanna read the pin 10, because that's the pin that has the input of that button. So I'm gonna read input of pin 10, and I want to know if that's going to be high or low. So I can, instead of putting in a number here, down in my math at the very, very bottom, I have the option to pull out high or low. All right, oops. And we're gonna plug this in to my if statement. So if, when, if this is true, then I'm going to do something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, well, I guess first the green light, and then the yellow light, and then the red light. So if you have this if then set up, I challenge you to pause our video and see if you can use the blocky coding that we've used before to change and have that button press start a green light and wait and start a yellow light and wait and then start a red light. All right, so we're back and let's take a look at how we would program this in so that you can check it out. So if this button is pressed, then I am going to set my green light. So my green light is pin 11. So I'm gonna set pin 11 to high. That turns my green light on. And I am going to wait. Let's say I wait one second, maybe I wait two seconds. Have a nice green light. And then I'm going to turn my green light off. So let's turn my green light, which is on pin 11 to low. And when I turn my green light off, next one that comes up is yellow. So I wanna turn my yellow light on at the same time. 
Yellow, if I follow this yellow wire, goes into pin 12. This is a beautiful thing about coloring your wires in a way that makes sense because I don't have to even follow this wire. I see my red, yellow, green right over here. It makes it so you don't have quite as many errors. All right, so I'm gonna set pin 12 to high and then I'm going to wait. The yellow light is never as long as the green light, so let's just wait one second. And then I will set my yellow light, which is pin 12, to low. And after the yellow, I want to set my red light to high, because I want to turn my red light on. That one is in pin 13. You can either follow it, or we can look over here. It's the one with the pink. So we're going to turn that to high, and maybe we wait another second, and we will turn that pin to low. So pin 13 to low, and that will turn it off. All right, and the whole time that I'm in this loop, it's going to keep reading whether or not this pin meets what I'm hoping for. So we can start our simulation. We notice that we have some voltage here. We don't have anything going on. And we can press this and then instantly my green light turns on, then the yellow, then the red, and then it's off. And now I can start it over again. And that is our fun traffic light. You can change the times here if you would like to. And then you have something you can build on your breadboard. And if you'd like to, you can have a lot of fun while you're playing with your cars at home. Thank you so much for joining us with this Arduino Uno Tinkercad tutorial. It's one of our beginner ones, and we will be getting some really cool projects done. So make sure you follow along, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us at patreon.com slash Bye, friends.